Now, on my newest video on the main channel, I spoke about how I used to do NBA content before I switched over accidentally to doing kind of like rise and fall videos back in 2021, I believe. I think it was May or June of 2021. And now I wanted to just make a video on the second channel where I can talk about everything that I learned going from I think 2,000 subscribers when I was doing NBA content, all the way up to 150,000 subscribers right now. So I wanted to tell you guys some things that like other big YouTubers don't speak about, which happens to be some of the back end of things. So what you guys see on YouTube usually isn't what other YouTubers see on the back where they show their dashboards or anything else. So let's get right into it. When I was doing NBA content, it was pretty much in a point where everybody was doing NBA content. There was like Low, there was Agent, there was a couple other people that were doing NBA content around the same time as me. So it was kind of cluttered already and that niche isn't wildly showcased. I had a couple of really close fans that really liked my content but I really needed something to switch up because I think in May of 2020 when I was doing NBA content just a lot that's when I first came back to the platform that's when I started to see kind of my content blow up, but also it would stagnate. So I did a lot of videos. I went from like 200 subscribers in May of 2020 to over, I think a thousand went in like October of 2020. So it was within a couple of months where I was able to generate a big buzz, not really big buzz, a thousand subscribers, but a big enough buzz that I could actually start getting paid for some of my videos I was making. So there became like a lot of like draft videos, like where these uh, basketball players should be drafted to or videos where I would talk about some of the free agents that should be picked up that was during the summertime and then those videos all did pretty well but going into the new year of 2021 things started to slow down significantly December was kind of uh, low and then every other month I was only making around 100 bucks a month and that was being spent on making like thumbnails for the channel so uh, it was a constant 100 bucks but then I would lose 100 bucks or uh, 30 bucks and then I'd gain it back and it was just something that was good change on the side and I was also working a full-time job but this took up a lot of my time because I was uploading consistently I was uploading maybe four or five times a week which is only giving me two days to actually relax after working it was something that I really enjoyed doing and I still enjoy doing to this day is just uploading videos but that's something that I really enjoyed because making NBA content was pretty easy all I had to do was write a quick script I had to, to read it off onto the, the camera and then upload it. <laughs> That's the easy thing about it. But I was so monotone and I didn't really express my voice as much. And I think I was just really, really nervous because I had a lot of my friends that followed me as well. And I think I wanted to be more of like a very serious channel, but obviously it didn't work out and I was, pretty not really let down but in may of 2021 right when everything started to to change for my channel i think i uploaded at least 16 videos or maybe even more and i just barely cracked a hundred dollars and that's when i was like all right it's time to make a change if i'm doing all this work and not getting anything out of it then there's something that i'm doing either wrong or the niche is just really dying down and obviously if i would have stuck with it maybe there could have been something but i think i just needed something new and i really wanted to look at like youtubers or or like content creators in general. And one of the people I saw a lot was GeoWise. That was getting a lot of unnecessary attention because now he doesn't get any attention. But before, he was getting a lot of unnecessary attention because of the way that he dribbled basketball. So I wanted to talk about just GeoWise in general. And for some reason, I named it the rise and fall of GeoWise, which was something I wasn't really going to name it. But I was one of the first people to ever make that video. And that started to pop off because everybody wanted to watch those types of videos. Rise and fall videos at that time were booming, and the only people that I remember in that genre was me, Sunny V2, and uh, Internet AJ. I started getting comparisons to like Sunny V2 or Internet AJ right off after that video, and that was during the summer. I'm pretty sure it was like June 2nd or 3rd when that video started to take off. I first uploaded it, and then right at the start, it only had like 200 views, and I was like, oh, well, you know, I failed, so time to go back to regular content. But within like a week, it started to like generate even more views. Then it was at like 30,000 views, which was my most viewed video at the time. So I was pretty ecstatic and I was like, wow, like what do I, that was the point where I was like, where do I go from here? Do I continue to make NBA videos or do I try to switch the content up like rise and fall videos or what happened videos or talking about different influencers? And I was 
gonna strictly put it to basketball content creators but then that obviously kind of changed as well so i kind of uploaded more videos around that genre and then a lot of people were like well if you're gonna make this type of content then i'm gonna unsubscribe and that kind of hurt me at first because they were like more of like my diehard fans and i was pretty upset but i understood that people didn't come there to watch those types of videos they watched basketball videos and i was understanding and i realized that those people may have left but then other people will come in it will double it will triple it i think in august that's when i got 10,000 subscribers and um i was very dumb because i accepted a offer from atlas vpn for 75 bucks <laughs> i don't know why it was like a startup and i was like I was just excited because $75 for like ha not even a minute of, of work is kind of insane. And even back then, I was like, wow, that's great. But it really wasn't because I made a rice gum video and the uh, the ad was like a minute. And then people were upset because I didn't put too much like mm, <laughs> into the, the into the video. And I, I was going to redo a rice gum video. But, you know, uh, recent recent things, you know, I, I didn't want to really do that. The back end. All right, let's get back to the back end. Let's get to the, the, the juice of this story. So things started to go really well. And within a couple months, I got I went from like 10,000 subscribers to 50,000 and then 50,000 to 100,000. But then I got into a, like a little bit of a slump. When I hit 100,000 subscribers, things started to, t to like slow down, like not not slow down like a lot, but just started to slow down. And I think it's probably the oversaturation of the genre where I feel like every Everybody is doing long form video essays now and you really have to stand out from the crowd i was talking to uh one of my friends within the the youtube space about this like if they think that it's over uh oversaturated especially with video video essays and uh they also said yes it's gotten to a point where it's oversaturated but now people are starting to leave the genre because they're not gaining any new subscribers and it's very hard to to gain subscribers like we see some people like internet anarchists really blow up but that's because his content is great along with his video editing and some of the topics that he speaks about and that's something that people could really learn from is that he was stuck at like i think 50,000 for a little while but then once he started to really start rolling then you start rolling and that was the same thing that happened with me i started to roll and i started to, to snowball and then eventually you slow down just a little bit like YouTube will do something where you'll slow down, but then you'll pick back up, but then you'll slow down, but then you'll pick back up and then you'll slow down. It's never like an always like uphill battle until you hit 100K and then all of a sudden it's all downhill and you're just you're just um, gliding. You're just you're just using the momentum to continue to grow. This is usually never like that. It's kind of like a uh, like you have to build up this hill, then throw the, the snowball down and then build up the hill and then snow the throw the snowball down and i'm not complaining i'm just telling you how it is from the back end because people probably think that it's so easy to be a youtuber or do video essays because that was one of the things back in the day where people would be like oh it's so easy to do video essays or rise and fall videos but now it's gotten to a point where you have to be like very different than everybody else or else people aren't going to watch a video because why are they going to watch it if somebody else already covered it i'm at a point in my career where it is starting to slow down just a little bit but i've also seen in the past once you're hitting close to like a big milestone like 150,000 subscribers it's harder to get to that point of 150,000 subscribers like i just got to 150 and now all of a sudden my views are starting to go back up but obviously it could just be me being like paranoid not paranoid but superstitious not everybody really speaks about the process of youtube and how sometimes you'll slow down and that's not something where you have to worry about it i remember i my first little like drought where i wasn't getting that many views it was probably in like August or like the summertime last year, which was completely different than what it was ever, ever like, because I was always gaining like maybe millions of views every month. And this is the first time where my views weren't really, really hitting. So I was, I was pretty like scared. I was nervous. I was like, maybe people are finished with me. Maybe people don't really like the content anymore. That was the first time where I was kind of like scared because you know, you, you build your whole uh, brand off of YouTube and then you're kind of in a, a, a funk where people aren't really going to watch your videos or you feel like people aren't going to watch your videos and kind of unmotivates you because you're kind of scared of like what happens next you start to get anxiety for when you upload the next video and if it's going to pull in views or not and then you start making videos not because you like making the videos but because you're in fear that your videos aren't going to do well and i think i was at that point just a little bit during that summer and especially because i just got off of vacation and then i was moving into a house or into a, an apartment complex so i was worried about the views and how much money my youtube can still make and then all of a sudden in september then my views started to take a very big like 
bump. And then I saw Nadia video do really, really well, and I was really happy about that. And then it was something that that really motivated me. And then after that, all my views started to go really, really up. Like everything started to get like 200,000 views and more. It would go into another funk where you're not really making that much money or you're not making that many views or you're not making that many subscribers. And that's kind of where I am right now where I'm not making that many subscribers, but I've, I saw a, like a quote where you have to be content where you are in order to grow. And I, I actually kind of believe in that because if you're always looking for the next milestone or if you're always like not content and you're always just trying to grow you kind of lose track of everything else in life i saw my friends at, at my wedding and i kind of realized that I, I haven't been spending time with them as much as i should and we're all on borrowed time in this world and um you know you want to spend time with family as much as possible that's why i try to tell people who are getting into youtube to not completely give up on everything outside of youtube because that's what I did. I was slowly, slowly like making YouTube videos and then I gained like 300 pounds and now I'm working it off. But you know, you get into your own spot where you're making money, you're saving up and you just feel like you had to make more content, more content and more content or people will forget about you. And that's how I was. But now I'm at a point where I'm content where I am, but I'm happy with the growth. And I think that's everything, that's everybody that has done YouTube. All right, let me put it like this. I'm content where I am, but I know that I want to continue to change my content and make it better. That's why I'm saying like, I'm content where I am with my YouTube career, but I want to continue to grow my YouTube, like editing styles or thumbnails or, or things that I can improve on. YouTube is not always up. There's going to be times where you won't get that million view video or you'll make a, a, a couple hundred thousand dollars and then the next year your views may be down and you're not making that same amount of money or you're not seeing that same amount of growth. But that's not something that you should be discouraged about because everybody goes through it. PewDiePie went through it. YouTube takes time and you want to take your time to, to kind of feel it out. Everybody takes time and you'd rather be the turtle in this race rather than the hare. Again, slow growth is is growth regardless, nonetheless, and it's probably the best type of growth. Trust me, within a year, maybe two, I'll be at that point where I wanna be at, and I'll upload a video and tell you guys to watch this video because it's all about positivity. And yes, everybody gets into a point where they feel negative about themselves, or they feel negative about the content that they're putting out, or they feel anxiety with the content that they're putting out, but it's all something that you have to just work through. You have to work through it. Everybody goes through it. People go through it with basketball. People go, like superstars go through it with basketball. Is this something you have to fight, fight through? Like. I understand that there's the video essay like genre is oversaturated right now, but I'm blessed because I was one of the first people to get into it. And even though I'm not growing at a significant rate, I'm still growing and I'm still loving all the, the interactions that I get with my videos. And I know that this little small point in my life is just gonna take off and it's just another footstep or our stepping stool into another phase of the, the channel. And it's all about, you know, being consistent updating or upgrading your your editing style everything and then just making sure that you are consistent and consistently growing as a, a content creator making sure your scripts are better making sure you're making better content things like that if you're feeling discouraged trust me i'm there with you sometimes and i also feel discouraged and just know that you're not alone and you're not just this person who's not getting the views that they they see because even people that have millions of subscribers if they don't see the growth they also get discouraged and if they don't see the views that they once were getting they will also get discouraged i've talked about people and content creators that get discouraged with uh the views that they aren't seeing well you have to understand it's all part of a process but that's all for me and i'm hoping that you that you remain positive and remain doing youtube and you know i hope this makes your day feel better because you might need to hear this again thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video competitor while also working through serious injuries and nagging pain. But behind closed doors, Kurt Angle is indulging in one of the most devastating mixes of painkillers which almost took his life away. Today on the channel, I wanted to discuss Kurt Angle's career, the rise of Perk Angle, and the darkest points in his life that Kurt Angle was able to recover from. I was a huge wrestling fan when I was just 